the 90th year for FIKI, and this is what we are celebrating through this very special lecture series that we've established. And therefore, all of us, we welcome uh, Professor Ram Charan, renowned business advisor and author. Let's give him a resounding welcome. Thank you very much, sir, for thank you, thank you joining much, us, sir. for being with us I here. I feel like coming home here. And I feel very, very honored to have this opportunity with you. Uh, my mission in life is that when I'm allowed to have these sessions, I hope each of you take at least one or two insights. That's what I live for. I have no real theories. I will share with you what I see across the globe. None of it is original. I learn from people like you. You let me learn, let me experiment, and then say how I can teach people all over the world. That's what I really do. So are you ready? Yes. Fantastic. So I want you to know a couple of things. First, is that the leadership going forward is different. What made you successful in the past may not make you successful in the future. And that's my whole theme throughout as I take us through from analog to digital companies. Many of the companies even within the digital population are beginning to be left behind. So in doing that, I prepared a little agenda and, and I will go through reasonably fast. If the first one, can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. Can you see that? Can you see that, all of you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the first thing I'd like you to note is the leader who is going to succeed is going to be able to detect the new trends. Perceptual acumen is now mandatory. The trends do not come on their own. They are created by human beings. The leaders need to detect who are these catalysts who are creating the new trends. Take some examples. The iPhone. Before iPhone, which brands were the most famous? Nokia. Nokia, number one, 53%. And Pankaj Bhai, you love this. I was on the jury with the CEO of Nokia in which we nominated you to be the man of the year, CEO oh. of the year. <laughs> Think about that. And how long did it take for that company to? <clears throat> take a guess. Three years. Three years. So please, stop the word disruption. Think about destruction. Destruction of industries bookstores, music, Hollywood Now, ESPN. It's no longer disruption. It is either uh, uh, destruction <coughs> or creation of new industries or a total reconstruction of value chain if you are B2B. My point of emphasizing this is the mindset of the top team. And you say, if I'm not moving with the speed of change, if I'm not seeing the external trends, if I'm not seeing who are the catalysts who are driving these trends, I have a big issue. Not only I could be left behind, could the industry be destructed? could the company disappear? Am I coming out clearly? Yes. Yeah. Two weeks ago, all of you heard that Amazon decided to buy Whole Foods. Everybody knows this. It has sent tremors inside almost all retail outlets in America for particular. Because that particular thing 
put that in clear focus that while 9,000 retails in America have gone, while Sears announced it could go bankrupt, now people think which way it is going. Please note, when I talk to hedge funds, those hedge funds are telling me, said, Ram, don't worry about Amazon's announcement. We will start shorting those stocks before they announce anything. So the hedge funds are now going to see which industries, which companies are going to be under the destructive movement of these digital enterprises. And they will go to short them first before you see some of the announcements. And this is not just American phenomena. So there's a big change here. I gave you the negative side. I also want you to think the positive side. We have $80 trillion global economy. The digital game permits for us to cross boundaries, cross geographies, cross industries. So those who have entrepreneurial flavor and those who have imagination, they will think their industry definition is different and their market size is no longer X. It is 10X, 20X, 30X, 50X and we get out of the gate and do that. And that's my basic thing for people to see. Do we have my management team who has this mindset, perceptual acumen, and be able to say that this industry could go down, but at the same time there's a huge possibilities. And do I have the entrepreneurial, and do I have the imagination that the total size of the market space could be 10x, 20x, 30x, 100x, Anybody recalls the blockbuster as a chain? Yeah. Remember that? So Netflix at the time is a legacy company, if you will. And they go to streaming. When they go to streaming, how big is this market? It's huge. Clear? So I'll take you through these things very quickly. But that's the basic thing I, wanna, I want to bring out. Then I will go very deep to really <clears throat> I want you to think about the first item. I see companies talk, but they don't know. The power is passed to the consumer. It is an unstoppable trend. You all know it why, how, you all use it. But we've got to organize our work that we understand the power to the consumer. What does it mean? The global economy is going to be changing. You're going to see at least a third of the economy in 10 years on a digital basis. So here is the opportunity for us. And we're saying here that we're creating a new market space. <coughs> I'd like each of you to think about the industries. If you are multi-industry, go industry by industry. This way to get to this point. I want you to think about <clears throat> on this spectrum, in terms of the digitization, where are you? The book's already done. Music already done. Hollywood is coming through. There are numbers who are still laggards going in there. So ask your legacy industry, where is it on the spectrum? And then you say, which, which born digital catalyst can come into your industry? And it start initially disrupting, but could it destruct? My argument is, get ahead of the curve and don't wait. You become the disruptor. You create the new industry. But do you have the right mindset? Do you have the right team to do this? And here you can be defensive or you can go on the attack. Number of companies so well, so big will disappear. Not because they don't have resources, but because the mindset is missing. So as you see that, <clears throat> that the born digitals among themselves have begun
to compete. I will give you an example of that. All of you know IBM? Let's say yes, please. Yes. Okay. And it was a company that was saved in 1993 by Lou Gerstner. Done very well. It has fantastic digital, fantastic technological assets. It's a legacy. What? IBM. IBM. Yeah. Anybody wants to take a wager of its survival? Think about that. It has a star-studded board. A star-studded board. Five years, 21 quarters, consistent losses both ways. Have to do it. I'm not blaming them. In the digital part of it, they have heaviest competition from Google's, from Microsoft even from Amazon. And in the digital space, the rate of growth has begun to decline. In this game, ladies and gentlemen, if you miss the corner, you know what I'm talking about? If you miss the corner. Is that a fair terminology? If you miss the corner, stop working and start teaching. That's right. <laughs> I want you to pay a real attention to this part here. Yeah, you can see it? Yes. You can see it? Yeah. I want you to really see this because I'm dealing with this almost every week across the globe. Look at this part here. A number of industries, please consider the word industry, not companies, because the attack is on the industries. Number of industries have come to a point where you see the arrow. You see the arrow? Here the margins have begun to decline. Here the consolidation in the industry has begun. And here you could see at some point in the curve <coughs> is this industry's core business is no longer going to create the value. So I give you a contentious one. How do you feel about the IT outsourcing industry? You got it? I say contentious one because when I talk to these guys, they're very hopeful. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Honest to goodness. I had one on the plane coming in with me, a CEO, oh. uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, New York to here. Yeah, it's okay. Now, my point, intellectual honesty. Insiders may not be able to see it. So I'm suggesting in the boards, you've got to get some outsiders whom you trust and be able to sit down with you on one-on-one -on -one and say, wait a minute, can't you see this? How do we show you? Which way we go? And then you see that the mindset has to be digital. And the question is, ask me back what it means. It's not some fancy mystery. People who know algorithms, they think about strategy very differently from those who don't. I can tell you that firsthand, because I do strategies. Their imagination, their definition of market space, if you have understood what algorithms do, it's very different from those who don't have it. But you don't have to be a mathematician, and you don't have to code. But you've got to learn what it can do. And that's how the, the Larry Page, that's how Jeff Bezos in Amazon, and that's what now Satya Nadella in Microsoft, they are able to see a picture, its architecture, its opportunity in a very different way than the, than the person who don't know anything about this. So here I put some names, uh, some new kind of CEOs, Starbucks as a new CEO. Anybody wants to guess where he came from? 
free dinner. Microsoft. Kevin Johnson. Howard is still the chairman. His full-time work is technology. He's converting Starbucks to technology. His space is very big. I have another one, Carrefour, CEO from technology. Bank of New York, <coughs> Mellon Technology Visa. Uh, Mattel, lady from Google. I'm not saying it's a trend. I'm not saying they will succeed. But I just want to tell you this has begun. In my work, as many of you know, I select CEOs in the United States. Some of the largest companies in the world. A six hour interview to see where the mindset is. If the mindset is not there, <clears throat> and if you're not a people person, the rest won't count. And then you gotta do other things too, character, ethics, you gotta do all those things. But those two are minimum requirement. And so here, <clears throat> I brought a little framework for you. Uh, this is a, a framework I found very helpful from a CEO that any business you're in, I like you to really take this home and do some work with your team. And I will go a little slow on this because it's just a shorthand. First is the consumer. And the key is when I say consumer, <clears throat> you gotta see end-to-end -end experience. You've got to live there. You gotta see the touch points. You gotta see what the experience is. It's no longer just one day going there because the power has passed to the consumer. Second, each consumer is going to be treated e uniquely. That's what Amazon does. We have data on it, you go at it. No longer the old segmentation. That's gone, each. And the digital technology permits that. And then you have the data and the ecosystem is the competitive advantage. And here, I want you to know, and this is the second most important point I'm gonna to suggest to you. The old industry analysis is gone. Anybody recalls Mike Porter's framework? He did Mike those? Porter. Gone. It was good then, it's no longer. Why? The competition is not among the rivals in an industry. The competition is in the ecosystem. You build one, you compare with the other one, you learn how to govern this, so the competition is among the ecosystems. It is not the old industry definition. So as you go back and look at your businesses on a global basis, see what is your ecosystem, what is your competition's ecosystem. In B2B, you have the value chain total reconstruction. All of you know some of these going to be eliminated. So here we figure out where does it fit the ecosystem is linked, platform is linked here, and here is the punchline. Either you have a platform, others join you, or you will be a part of somebody's platform. And I'm very serious about this. It's not play on words. People like me are able to predict that are you going to have a platform, or are you going to be a part of somebody else's platform? and therefore where the margins will go. And here, think of some such way to do this thinking for each of your businesses. Now, the, 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 the digital business model is different. Please note this very carefully. The metric is not earnings per share, it's gone. Accounting has not learned how to deal with the digital game. Accounting conventions were not built for this. It is cash per share. Unless you commit fraud, you cannot distort cash. EPS you can. Number two, 
the technology investments in the businesses will be enormous. And we have to find a way to make them variable cost. And those companies are emerging like cloud. You can buy on a usage basis. And here, I want you to know that capital expenditures become operating expenditures. And that's very important. The balance sheet changes. The profit and loss changes. The business model changes. And your relationship with investors is going to change. And therefore, you're going to see how do we really make this thing going. And in doing that, your new market space is X, 10X, and your return on investment is going to be delayed. We've got to be psychologically ready to do this. I will take a pause here. Could you have a look at this? This is Amazon. Most people will tell you Amazon is not profitable. I just want to change your thinking. Can you, read, can you see that? It's OK. So look at 2017. The gross profit is 48 billion. <clears throat> it is hard cash. It's not an accounting number. Anybody who has $48 billion of hard cash in 2017 to have the discretion what to do with it? Clear? Second point, <clears throat> look at their GNA, 1.4%. P&G, GE are huge multipliers of this. Walmart, huge multiplier of this. You can't do that without digitization. Have a look, free cash flow. You have cash income, and you pay late to the suppliers. You are a cash machine. Now, I'm not peeled the onion for you. Uh, their, 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 their technology investment is over 12%, which is huge. And when I do the numbers for 2020, which is only about 10, 12 quarters away, Look at the hard cash. And by the way, they are getting data as the oil, as the equity. Wherever they can do, whatever they can do, get the data. Sophisticated platform, and their innovation is in new algorithms. You all know 90% of the algorithms were built before the 19th century, from 17th century on. <coughs> And they are reasonably clearly available today. They are companies that sell algorithms today. And so we're saying here that your business model needs to be reconstructed. And then we're saying, how do you make the transition happen? And the first thing is that you've got to get the data from multiple sources. Your sources are not enough. It has to be in the right form, right architecture, and so on. And most big companies have their data all in the silos someplace. Your competitive advantage is ecosystem. Because that's differentiated. What I want you to know is we have to build new core competencies. And don't let the old core competencies prevent you getting new core competencies. Please note, it was OK until five, six years ago. Build on your core competencies. That is the wrong question. Did I come through on this? That is the wrong question. Because your existing core competencies may have already begun obsolete. You're watching ESPN, you're watching cable, you're watching Netflix streaming, and this is very hard for legacy companies because all of us were trained for 30, 40 years. What's your core competence? Build on it. So you've got to do the transition, which way to go, which wants to keep, which one's got to go. And that transition is very hard. It's not easy, as I see. And here, the race is for speed and scale. 
you can be doing great job and your speed is slow and its scale is low, don't have enough data, can't do the AI, you may not have a competitive advantage going forward. And so you heard all these buzzwords of organization agility. I said, big buzzwords, and I always pay a thousand rupees fine for using buzzwords. <laughs> so I give you three alternatives for organization structure. One, you could be doing the existing structure, create temporary teams. For most in the American scene, it's not working out because the transition issues are very tough. Resource allocation, people assignments, and the motivations. But you may have it right. Second is create a separate unit within the same company. That is working. But the third one is the Brazilians. How many of you heard of 3G? 3G, 3G? Is the Brazilians private equity? They own the world's largest beer company. They own Kraft, they own Heinz, and so on and so on. So their guys created the digital unit, separately listed company. It outcompetes Amazon and Walmart both in Brazil. It has own market value. So I like that. I go on the board. I'm on the board of the cha or chairman of the board of the parent company, and I see this. So here, three options, you think about it. And then we're saying here is the chief digital officer, please consider if they have the right qualifications to be the part of the top team. So I did this experiment with one company. I said, lift it. I've, I've done another one in China. I said, bring this up right in your deliberations of a strategy. Ask him or her those questions. It will open your mind what the strategic options you're missing. That's the purpose behind that. I'm not saying you appoint somebody, but have somebody participating in that, in that kind of an activity. And by the way, CD of Nike reports right to the CEO. That's beginning to happen in my work. I see that. And whether report or not, that's a different issue. But you need to include in the discussions what are these new ways to think about using the algorithm. That's my purpose, not the purpose of official stuff. And then you see is the Continue, continuation <clears throat> of your core business. And the reason is I need cash. I can't get out right away. And I have to build it, keep it, but I have an issue, I need cash to do the other business. So there is this transition balancing, and balancing short term and long term. And so here, <clears throat> You've got to have a board with you. You need a digital HR system. And you need a steering of those resources as you make those allocations going forward. What I've not done here, and I'm dealing in America, and that is how do you deal with the active shareholders? And how do you deal with the board? And how do you deal with your investors? It's a real issue. Here, I have no idea what happens. It's not there you go. It's happening here. <clears throat> And I won't keep you very much. Old industry analysis is gone. Your digital assets are human. I did not say your digital assets are algorithms. Did I make sense to you guys? It's very costly and difficult to find that human talent in Silicon Valley. Very expensive, buying a company just for one person. You've heard this before. Absolutely. You know what I'm talking about. So I say your digital assets is humans. I can say algorithms and all that stuff. And the second thing I'm saying is that you've got to create the ecosystem, the board, all of you know this, it's in the press. All of you heard of PNG? Of course you did. This is the third time the activist shareholder is in. First time he succeeded to get the CEO fired. That's true, absolutely, I know this. 
I met the new CEO of PNG, and he now goes in. And he will be surprised. He does a very thorough job, by the way. He wrote an 81-page report on GE. I'm supposed to know GE, probably the only outsider who knows this GE for 45 years. And it was very accurate. And I can tell you later how they got accurate. So he's going and saying, look, you promised $10 billion cost reduction in the last five years. Where is the cash? So they accounted for $7 billion. Through the board, they can't find three. Think about that. And now he's saying, your internal structure of matrix is cumbersome, it's slow. Cost cutting alone will not do. You've got to do innovation, and I don't see the innovation. My point in the American scene, people are analyzing this, and they have some hardcore facts, not some. There are some who, who play the, the, the financial game. And so here you have the managing short term, long term, and you've got to manage the investors. I can take that on the, on the question and answer basis. <clears throat> Here, did I make the case of digital mindset? I, and I'm doing for CEOs in China and America. I want the CEOs to take some time and learn these things. You can all learn it. I'm not suggesting you do coding. I'm not suggesting you learn how to do algorithms. But you need to know what they can do. Is that fair? You learn profit and loss analysis. You learn balance sheet analysis. You learned it somewhere. But you need to learn this. If you learn it, you will ask better questions. And that's one of the jobs that top leaders do. They ask good questions. Uh, the leadership pipeline I have in mind was you recruit young people and create a pipeline for high potential. So I define that. They need to have the aptitude, digital mindset. They know to have to have a nose for business. And they need to demonstrate in their careers, schools, colleges, that they can be team leaders, build a team, drive the team. And they have to have a consumer orientation. And the last one is, we got to imagine a new future and build a new business. So my request to all of you is, very number one, it's not disruption, it is destruction or creation. Take your pick. Correct? If you miss the corner, it may be very hard to come back. So I don't have the graphs here. It just comes to my mind. When I plot the 83% business of Amazon and e-commerce, and all of you heard of Macy's? You know what I'm talking about? JC yeah. Penny? Their curves have gone down like this. One of them is 22 billion. <clears throat> the Amazon is close to 120. That gap is not likely to be filled. You miss the corner. And you've got to say what you're going to do. And you can see the private equity, the stock ownership, the price earning ratio declining, hedge funds moving in. And then we're saying here, that's the first one. Second, industry analysis of the past is over. Change your thinking. It's the competition among ecosystem. Third, your core competence. First work, what's your imagination of your future? Work backwards, what core competence you need? And then which one got to go? At the end of the day, do you have the top management mindset to drive this? And think on the attack that in an $81 trillion economy, a third of which will be digitized. You can argue third, fourth, fifth. Where is my unfair share? How do I get it? Because the digital strategies cross industries, cross boundaries, cross cultures. Where do I take? We in India have plenty of great leaders, great scientists, great mathematicians. We got to think beyond the boundaries of India to build those businesses. That's my suggestion. I hope I'm within the time here. And then I open to questions.
Thank you. Thank you very much.